what these niggas talking about? Two men being born and one man slaughterhouse. I'm a Jay Z, a one nigga Wu Tang, a dope set for country trap, Lil Wayne. I don't care for similarities. I'm a pioneer, not a parody. These ain't bars, this is barbarity. Stop it. Hold. Lupe yet lyrics and bars, dog. He said, I don't care for similarities because I'm a pioneer, not a pet. Dude, lyrics and... He said, I bench press elephants and bowling ball jump. Man, this song, man, I ain't want to stop it too early because there's so many in here. This song ain't even over. SLR, nigga. Woo! Lyrics and bars. Lupe Fiasco, Southside, Chicago. Damn it! What's up, peeps? Ah, comedian Ronnie Ray. Welcome to it's the Ronnie Ray Show podcast and show, whatever you want to call it. It's me. It's all me. Different segments of what I do: actor, comedian, writer, all that stuff. Debate shows, podcasts. We're doing it all. Sit back, relax, enjoy yourself, man. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. You know the worst thing about being in show business? It's not the grind. It's not even the pay. It's just coming home sometime. Yeah, of course, I told you. Come on, come on, play it, play it, play it. Y'all just playing it long. Bam! Uh, it's gonna be the same results. It don't matter what you playing. How many times are you gonna play, man? You'll play. You'll play. Every time I play, you play. Y'all playing with me. Come on along. Come on along. Play it. Let me help you. That ain't gonna work no way. Hey, man. Come on, You huh? all need to calm down for just a second. Give me that shit. Oh, it's man, all you're good. Reneged, man. It's all right, good. You're hey, a man. nigger. Hey, I done told you. Stop calling me names, man. You're a nigger. Stop calling me names, man. This is key right here. No. Ha 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 ha. It's key, baby. Like, like these. this dude with all these keys. <laughs> Looking like Bookman. Good times. You like know. that book on your nose right there. Uh, uh, excuse me. Those keys go to them trucks. And he's right. You got a booger moonwalking across your mustache. <laughs> 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 That's the same booger from last week. I didn't think it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, y'all, look who's here. Look who's here. Hollywood Ronnie Ray. Cousin. What's up, Uncle Jay? What's up, y'all? Oh, hi. Hollywood Ronnie Ray came back to Chicago. Yeah, I'm here for a minute. How you doing, little youngster? I'm good, man. How are you? Oh, man, I'm good. I'm good. You still doing your comedy thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still out there chasing the dream, right? That's the only way you do it, bro. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> You need to stop chasing it. You ain't never gonna catch it. This nigga here. <laughs> you need to come back to reality and have you come on out here and work with me on them there trucks. It's getting hot outside. You know that kids love ice cream when it gets hot outside. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, this is the lit right here. You talking about doing some damn comedy. What type of humor are you looking for? Humor? <laughs> you better get some good humor on that damn truck. <laughs> He always trying to get somebody to work on them damn trucks. Yo, Ronnie, man, stay at it, because you funny. Oh, uh, thanks, man. I mean, you ain't Eddie Murphy funny. <laughs> you ain't Beverly Hills Axel Foley funny. Yeah. But, I mean, you banana in a tailpipe funny, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, Ronnie, you ain't Reggie Hammond from 48 Hours funny. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you are Roxanne. <laughs> you don't have to turn out the red lights. You're not Chandler and Gerald from Golden Child, funny. <laughs> but you are. I, I want, want the knife. knife. Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it, man. Okay. You're not quick from Harlem Nights, funny. But you is. Put him on the phone. Put your mama on the phone. <laughs> Put your mama on the phone. <laughs> Yeah, I'm never coming home. <laughs> hey man, Eddie Murphy didn't even say that in the movie. But he wrote the movie. That's how funny Eddie Murphy is. You might be Donkey from Shrek funny. <laughs> but then again, ain't nobody that damn funny. Oh, Roddy Ray funny. 
Man, what's wrong with them? Man, forget them. You see these new Derrick Rose, boy? Yeah, they tight. Yeah. <laughs> they are tight. I told my damn ACL trying them on, though. Man. Man, forget what they talking about. You funny. All you need is some new material. Next time you get on stage, this is what you do. You say, there was a civil war, and then there was black people, and then there was niggas. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that, man. Chris Rock did that back in 96 on the Burning Fame special on HBO. And it worked for him? Yeah, it worked. It'll work for you. I can't do that. That's against the code, man. What code? Singers sing other singer songs all the time. Why can't comics do other comics jokes? Because that's against the comedy code. I can't steal these jokes, man. Okay, okay, okay. Forget, forget, forget material. You need a catchphrase. You need like, a, like, I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. That's Bernie Mac. Yeah, and you can use it because he's dead now. That's wrong, man. You, you ain't even trying to make it, man. What up, y'all? What up, y'all? This is Ronnie Ray's random list. Random list. People normally do top three, top five, top ten, top one hundred. I'm picking a number and I'm going with it. I'm picking a number and I'm going with it. So I'm going to say this. Today's number. Thirteen. Thirteen is today's number. Thirteen of the top Jay-Z albums of all time. My list. Because I'm a fan of Jay. Congrats. Getting into the Hall of Fame, bro. This is what it is. I'm a fan, so I listen to all the albums. And I'm going to say this. There's not really a bad album on here. You know what I'm saying? So people are like, ah, oh, that album was trash, whatever. But I can still listen to it. It's still listenable, if that's a word. Listenable. I still listen to it. So now I'm going to say solo album. Because Jay-Z got an album with his wife. He got a Kanye album. He got with the rock band. He got R. Kelly albums. No, we're doing Jay-Z by himself. So here we go. Number 13. Number 13 is um Kingdom Come. I think Kingdom Come will probably be everybody's number 13 of Jay-Z's album. But Jay-Z, I like that, that that title track is dope. He got some crossover hits on there. It's listenable. Like I said, I can listen to it. I have a problem buying it. And I listen to it all the time. So number 13 is um Kingdom Come. Number 12, top Jay-Z albums in my opinion. It's volume three. Volume three. I love the intro. I love Put Your Hands Up. I love um, Big Pippin, you know what I mean? Other than that, like, I think he was kind of like just, you know, just just going through the motions. And I, I digged it, though. I thought the album was cool. And I, like I said, I can listen to it all the time. When it was out, that's what I had in the, the, um, the CD deck. You know what I'm saying? Back in the day with the CD deck, I had Volume 3 playing. So number 12 is Volume 3. Number 11, number 11, I'm going to say uh, Magnum Carter. Number 11 is Magnum Carter because... I like I like the um, the Tom Ford cut probably can boost it up. That's one of my favorite Jay Z songs. That beat alone is just hard, man. That shit is hard. He used to crack me up when he played the basketball games and they couldn't say nigga. That shit was hilarious. Um, but yeah, Magna Carta. I didn't I didn't care too much for the um, just the Timberlake cut at the top. I thought it was all right, but like, a Holy Grail I'm like eh, it's all right. You know what I'm saying? But eh. But the rest of the album was cool. Rick Ross cut was dope. He had a cut with Nas on there. So, hey, man. Number number 11, Magnum Carter. Holy grill. Number 10. I'm going to go with his probably biggest crossover success. Number 10, Blueprint 3. Blueprint 3 had all the crossover. Run This Town, um, Death to Auto Tunes. Um, one of my favorite cuts on there, Already Home. Um, Ambition, One Man For Real. That shit. I'm a fan of that album, even though it wasn't it sound like the old Jay-Z is Jay-Z with money. So I'm like, yo, this is cool. He put an album out. Dope. I think Kanye did most of the most of the album, so it was dope on there. So um, number 10, Blueprint 3. Number nine. Number nine is the dynasty. Number nine is the dynasty, dude. Uh we just got through talking. Me and bro I'm like, man, that, that intro alone. Puts it above most of his albums because Dynasty nigga, ah, oh, you like yeah, in the CD deck. Then change the game comes on and then I just want to love you pops up and it's like ah, oh, this is dope man. And then it goes down. He has some mellow cuts. He had that, that couple of Scarface, couple couple with um, Snoop Dogg and shit. And um, he did the uh, one nine hundred, one eight hundred hustlers. Ah, oh, that's that. That's what I like. Yo, okay, I'm digging this. So Dynasty, the Dynasty is number nine. Number eight on the list. Number eight is what made him a superstar to me. Um, the world, he got the crossover, man, with the anti cut. Number number eight is volume two. Volume two, number eight, Hard Knock Life. 
That song's on there. Um, Jigga What, Jigga Who, The Cut With Ja Rule and A Million, and um, The Cut With X, man. Rest in peace to X, man. Money, cash, oh, that shit. It went hard, you know what I'm saying? But hey, it was some cuts on there that was some crossover stuff. Like, ah, not my favorite album, but it was dope. It still was dope. It was playable, so I ain't tripping on it. That's the word. Listenable is not a word. Playable is, so it was dope. So it made him a star. I think that's his biggest selling to the date, I think so. Um, volume 2. Volume 2 is number 8. Number 7, personal to me. Um, this is when I really started coming to fan. Y'all like, you late as hell when you say this shit. But I was late. Um... Number seven to me is Blueprint 2.1. I'm going to say 2.1 instead of the two because I think he had too many unnecessary tracks on a double album, but he broke down and got the best tracks on 2.1, and he got the remix to Excuse Me Miss on there, which that was like a, a summer banger in uh, 03, man. So to me, he had Hobie Baby. He had um, The Watcher with Rakim. Shh, that shit was crazy, man. So um, Blueprint, Blueprint 2.1. Blueprint 2.1, number seven. Number six, I had to change the list because I had to reorder this after we had a discussion. Uh, number six to me, in my lifetime, value one. Y'all probably like, why value one, man? Come on, man. That that title track at the top, where I'm from, he just had, you know, the streets was watching. He had all kind of shit. I'm like, yo, this shit is, is dope as hell, man. So, yo, uh... Listen to it now, it's like you have more respect for it. It was just, I think, probably because Big Pass and he had the song um, Sunshine on it. It's like, ah, and that belonged to the city with Black Street. Like, ah, you don't need that. Like, you harder than that, Jay. So, uh, yeah, volume one, though. Volume one is number six to me. Number five. Number five top 13 Jay-Z albums of all time, in my opinion, is um, 444. Now, a lot of people probably don't agree. Like, man, what the hell is that? The, the adult Jay with kids? We don't care for that shit, but hey, man, I digged it. Like, the, the Fuck Jay-Z song, um, the 444 track, Family Feud, yo, he was speaking some shit on that, man. So, yo, shout out to that one, man. I, I'd say number five, 444. Okay, now we're getting down to the top four. It's about to get interesting, because y'all be like, what are you talking about? Hey, man, it's my list. Make your own if you don't like it. Number four, to me. Number four top 13 Jay-Z albums of all time is American Gangster. American Gangster, it seemed like he thought about it a little bit more. Every track was like, he, he watched the movie and came up with the tracks and, and it comes on with the, the Denzel saying the line from the movie and it just albums talking at the top and then he comes in. I think what really made me like this album a lot because when he did the VH1 um, listening, he did the whole concert with the album. And I was like, yo, this is dope. Like, all right, I got to get this album. That really made me go out and get it. So, number four on my list, American Gangster, Jay-Z. Number three, people probably had to say number one because this shit is a banger. So, hey, number three to me was the first attempt putting the album out there. They, um, him, Dame, and Biggs put it out themselves, man. This was the hottie, man. Yo, reasonable doubt. The opening track alone. Beginning of that album, the, the, the first track you hear is Can't Knock the Hustle. That's, ah, ah, ain't no nigga comes on, ah, come on, man. Damn, Jay's killing that, man. He was killing that four, what, that 22 twos on there. Come on, man, come on. Come on, man. Oh, he, he killed that, man. Just like Pac was hot, Big was hot, so you ain't know. Like, who was this new guy? Nas was out. Wu-Tang was out. So, he's like, who was this guy? But he came in and held his own. So, yeah. Reasonable Doubt is my number three Jay-Z album. Number two Jay-Z album. Out of the 13 on my list. Number two. The Blueprint. The Blueprint. The Blueprint. I'm going to say this. I had just moved to Cali. I was there for like a year. This album comes out. I'm not a big fan yet. Like, this is near the end, too, near the first run. And I'm like, all right, let me listen to this album everybody talking about. So I went to the store. I don't know, because this is when record stores were out, and I was able to put the headphones on and play it. So I'm going through the tracks, and I saw one track that said featuring Eminem. And I'm like, yo, Renegade with Hard. I'm like, yo, this is dope as fuck. So I'm going to buy this shit just because of that. So I played it. Renegade's at the end. I played it straight through. I'm like, yo, I ain't had no skips. And he killing it. Yo, this is hot. 
So I played the album yesterday again, see if I felt the same way. So that's one of my favorite rap albums, period. So number two, Jay-Z List, The Blueprint, man. The Blueprint. Number one, man. Number one. Y'all probably like, why you picked that one? Number one. Because probably don't, a lot of people don't have that. This one is number one. Number one. To me, top Jay-Z 13 albums all time. Number one to me is the Black Album. The Black Album to me is incredible. It's incredible, dude. I remember running the store and getting it, ripping off the package, threw it in the CD deck. It comes on. I'm like, yo, first track, dope, with the moms at the top. Then what more can I say comes on? Ah, oh, ah, oh, he kills it, man. Then Encore comes on. Ah, oh, killing it, man. And what's after that? Brush your shoulders. Oh, cut the album off. Cut it off. He killing this shit. I think probably the weakest track to me, and it's actually a cut, Justify My Thug, and a cut with Cedric at the top. Those two, I kind of like stopped playing, but I let it play a couple of days ago before I wrote this shit out. And I'm like, yo, he actually speaking some shit on there. So I'm like, yo, damn near flawless album to me. I'm a fan of that one. That, that's dope. And probably the song I like the least is probably 99 Problems, but that's the biggest hit on there. So, well, you can't go wrong. So, number one, top Jay-Z albums, in my opinion, of 13, the Black Album. So, what do you think, people? What do you think? Subscribe right now. Follow this. Watch and share with people. I want to know what you think. What your number one albums are, man. What, what you think about Jay-Z, Jigga Man, you know what I'm saying? Hall of Famer, hip-hop, ho, God, Jigga, S. Dot, Beyonce husband. I don't know. <laughs> okay, you'll give them more names. But, hey, that's it, man. So, yo, shout out to Jay. Thanks for the music, bro. 13, hot 13 albums, in my opinion. What do you think? Subscribe. How was your upbringing coming up in Chicago? Oh, it was good. I had a mixture of both the city and the South Suburban life. Um, oh. It was cool. Um, like I said, I'm a South Side girl, wild 100, going to the, the, the suburbs. I mean, both of my parents in the church, so you would never think that I would ever be in, in the adult entertainment. Um, I mean, <laughs> everything was good. I mean, I really didn't have any struggles. You, you know what I mean? I didn't have any those sad stories that this is why this person got into the adult industry. That right. wasn't my story at all. We're not going to get that. I got into the industry when I was a grown-ass woman. And right. when I mean grown, that means I was married and divorced oh. when I got into the industry. So, in you know, it was my choice and my, de my de decision, excuse me, mm -hmm. because I did want to help my dad out. My dad was real sick. So okay. My mom called and had said that she needed some help. And instead of me coming back home, you know, I just opted to go into this multi-billion dollar industry, which is the adult entertainment. Wow. Okay. Did she say billion? Yes. They this, make, is, this is a big yeah. amount. Wow. Okay. Make okay. more than make Yeah, at one time, yeah. At one time, it was it was, it was was popping. Wow. <laughs> it's still popping. <laughs> it's still popping. Nah. Somebody's Somebody <laughs> watching it now. It's popping <laughs> off of somebody right now on their phone at the bus stop. They're getting it in. <laughs> Wow. Okay, so you say you, you did it just to help the family out. Was that your only option? At that time, that's what I thought that was my only option okay. because that's what I, I... I was working on my own production company. See, mm. I had resigned from my job in Chicago, and I had moved to California to become a big, you know, star, you know, acting, singing, dancing, all of that. So when she wanted me to come back, to come to my 9 to 5, and I was like, no, you know, it took me... 30 years to actually leave Chicago and, you know, and really oh, wow. try to pursue my dream and what I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I was like, well, let me try to do something that, you know, try to help. And really, um, honestly, when I went out for my first audition, it was really for um, Playboy uh, magazine and Hustler magazine. So it was only just for the magazine thing. So then when I went to uh, World Modeling mm -hmm. um, to there, you know, he was like, well, you know, you do real good in video. Now, I did the music video thing, and the pay was pretty good in music video. I just didn't want to do music video anymore, and that's what I thought that he was talking about. But, no, he was talking about um, porn. They didn't know. Video, now, video. This, right. Y'all going to say, you lying. I've never seen porn at all. Never. Whoa. I didn't know it. No, I never seen porn. The closest thing to porn that I seen was remember them Cinemax flicks that you yeah. come on late, late at After night. After dark, that you know you're not supposed to be watching. Yeah, Emmanuel, that's the only thing <laughs> closest to porn that I even know of. Wow. You understand what I'm saying? That I knew then. 
and I was like 30 something years old with kids. You know, so it was like, wow. you know, yeah. where you been? Yeah, you know, so then cool. when, the, remember the song that Lil' Kim used to have um, yeah. about Janet Jack me? And I didn't know who the fuck she was talking about. I know, <laughs> <laughs> like, You're like, the words rhyme. <laughs> I <laughs> saying the words and didn't know who she was talking about. You know what I'm saying? And I, we laugh about it now. Um, when I talk to Heather, Heather, I love her to dear. She's real cool. And when we talk about it now, she laughs at me because I'm like the um, I'm like the little church girl that got turned out. That's uh, what it uh, is. Uh, even though I'm not like that, mm -hmm. but they're like, you are, no, I ain't know nothing about none of y'all until I did my research. So I went through all of my high school years and in my grown up, not knowing none of them. Like who none of them was, but once I got into the industry and I started doing my research, and then I started respecting them as you know some of the black women that's in the industry that was you know trailblazers, mm -hmm. you know wow. in that, and it, you know like Dominique Simone, I got to meet her, you know, so I got to meet a lot of the people that was there before me, mm -hmm. and like I said, I didn't know nothing about them until I started doing my research on them, and like you know who was the hot black chick, you know who this and that and that 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 that. And uh -huh. then that's when I was seeing all this come up, you know. Yeah, I'm and I wasn't going to ask my uncle's name because I didn't want them to know what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> I was to myself. <laughs> Does Jeannie Pepper know? What up, y'all? Hey, we tired of this motherfucker now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't feel like cooking them all. <laughs> It's Thanksgiving Eve and this shit. It was the saddest intro. I don't feel like he's doing this shit. Like cooking them all. Yeah. And he's like, he's got to bring kids from all that shit. Dude, I got to fucking cook them all. It's, to... it's comedians and love comedy. I'm your host, Ronnie Ray. We here, Eric Mitch Mitchell, uh, Arkansas's finest. And uh, Ken Hamlet and this bitch. Yeah, we talk about comedy stuff, man. Only things comics know and only thing comics look. Yes, I don't know why I'm talking like that, but fuck it. We're going to do it anyway. Talk like that all the time. That was a little extra, though. Yeah. <laughs> Put a little octave in that bitch. All right, man. Okay. Question. Can't wait. We're going to go with you, goddammit. All right. Got that. All right. Top, top three favorite bitch by a peer. Ooh, by a peer. Okay. Shit. So, no famous people. No famous people. We are, we are, we are, we are in the clubs enough, shit. We know. Uh, fuck, what was his name? He had a bit with Charles Barkley, Arugula. Uh, Cam, Cam. God, oh, fuck, I forget his last name, Cameron. Uh, he has this bit about Charles Barkley ordering a salad, which is a joke in itself. And he couldn't say Arugula. Arugula. And it's like one of the funniest. Uh, uh, that's one. Shit. KB. That's a sketch? Mm. Yeah, that's a sketch. Oh, man. Uh, a second it? coming. Uh, KB Marion. Shout out. KB Marion. What's up, baby? And, and again, I'm coming back to you. Fucking up. Uh, Active. Oh, Will Smith. Will Smith bit. Oh, I love that bit. I keep saying that's not my favorite one out of y'all. Oh. Really? The homeless lady. That's my we favorite. Know, we, that's we funny. Know, we know, we know. Dude. <laughs> I don't know. Dude, okay. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny as hell to me. It is, bro. <laughs> Ronnie ate it. <laughs> no, it's funny as fuck. Weena, Weena. When weena. I did that video together a couple weeks ago, and just watch him do his whole, he's just so serious. That, you, that, you, I want this, this. Actor. Dude, it's just, that shit's funny as fuck to me. He be serious as fuck. Uh -huh. And then just says, actor. That shit's funny to me. So that was, among my peers, Cameron Arugula, KB, second comment with the Etch Sketch, and mm -hmm. acting Will Smith. And I still, to this day, ask him, do the Will Smith, do the Will Smith. It's too damn long. <laughs> like, you got a minute left. Do the Will Smith. I can't take that time out. Well, ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to get in that mode. Well, what's the name made me do it at the uh, the bar? What's the, uh, the not, not the comedy bar. What's the other one? North Bar. Oh, yeah. I was about to get off. No, no, no. Do the Will Smith That's joke you leave. I'm like, God damn, bro. You got a good joke, bro. That's fucking wrong. People man. ask you to do that's fucking wrong, man. You know what, though? Okay, you, we, we joke about it, but you say we all got shit we know him about. You know, we know him about. Yeah, you know, you got mean, to. Yeah. yeah, you gotta remember the bitch, man. I yeah. appreciate it. So, yeah. Yeah, all right, man. Mm. All right, my uh, three three bits that comics wrote that appears. How, how. Uh, you go cheating again. 
I'm not gonna cheat because the thing is like, how famous is famous? You know Dude, know? It, no, yeah, famous. no, 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 you ain't even. If you know him, you know. If you gotta know him, you have to be there and well, have seen him do this shit live. I was uh. sitting with Paul Moon. <laughs> <laughs> he ruined. You know so what? Chris Rock wrote this joke about bullets. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, all right, let me think about. It. So I, I said it in the last episode. Lance, he's one of my Lance Edward out of Portland. One of my favorites. He has this joke. Where he talks about, <laughs> there's a he has a couple of jokes. Like I said, they should be on TV. He has a joke about going on a date uh, with a with a butch lesbian woman who is now dating men. Terry with the eye, and she ate his ass. And <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny joke. But then he also has another joke about uh, working at Baskin Robbins, where. Uh, a gay gentleman comes in and he was like, I want an ice cream sundae. Uh, and then basically the, the punchline of the joke is uh, he does this thing where he's like, scoop and return, scoop and return. But then he goes, uh, <laughs> just take that chocolate and drizzle it all over my nuts, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it the way that he does the joke, and I'm ruining the joke, and y'all still laughing, but it's funny as hell. Like the those two jokes with some other stuff, hilarious. So that though those are two of my favorites. Um, uh, good, like one of my best friends in comedy, Sherry Hartman. She has these jokes that uh, she does. Like uh, my pussy is like. Jokes and she does <laughs> one of my <laughs> favorites. Tell you. One of my favorites is she says my my pussy is like going to um, Disneyland in your thirties, like for the first time. Like all your friends have already been there, but it's still pretty great or something like that. I've ruined that joke too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's <laughs> funny as hell because it's so like relatable and it's real. Sherry Hartman, also a great joke writer. And then the last joke that I, that I love. Oh, my boy Tyrone. High Jinx, the real High Jinx out in Portland also. Hilarious. He has this fucking like uh, civil rights pussy joke where he... he <laughs> Everything. It's, it's oh, every pussy. joke was about no, no, pussy. It's dirty. Ass. It's dirty. It's dirty. Okay. Uh, but he has a joke that's like a, a sex civil rights joke. <laughs> And uh, it starts off like real, like real, just chill. But then it gets like dirtier as it goes, and uh, he ends up like Rosa Parks in that pussy, and it's it's hilarious. Uh, so those are like three of the jokes that I absolutely love. That I'm like, damn, I wish I wrote those. Mm, For sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now to go back to the guys. Well, number one, I say Tony Robbins again. Mm. Uh, I was on stage with him. Well, I mean, he started before me, long before me, but. He has a joke. He, has, he comes out his intro and he has the music playing. Whatever the instrumental is, he raps to the shit and the song is called You Need Your Ass Beat. So you had the class of union and you got a GD, you need your ass beat. So he do the whole fucking <laughs> song. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with this nigga? <laughs> if you had a class of union, you got, you got, you got a need your ass beat. Something you know, like that. That's good. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> you had a fairy union and you're looking for a woman, you're a pervert or whatever. So he changed that shit. So. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga, that shit makes me laugh every time he started rapping that shit. Um, I say Tony Baker from the special uh, Never Scared. Yeah. I told him it was my favorite joke. He like, oh that one man. Um, uh, get the cereal, James. He just tell his mother like smoking cigarettes and his kid reading them cereal boxes. Just eat the motherfucking cereal pretty much. So that shit makes me laugh. And a homie named Devin Clark. I don't know if he <laughs> Devin, if you watching this shit. I think you took it from a conversation we had, but when I seen him do it on stage, I was laughing my ass off. He he does voiceovers and shit, so it works for him. So he has this thing called uh, um, out of the dark, poor as hell. Yeah, werewolf nigga. I'm like, yo, werewolf nigga, werewolf, werewolf nigga. <laughs> It's classic. We found out. We thought he quit. Like, man, who gonna take werewolf nigga? We chilling. Did werewolf nigga joke. So werewolf nigga, get the cereal, James, and you need your ass beat. Uh, my three. But I hear them motherfuckers. I'm like, yo, that shit is funny as fuck. I put them on the list. There's a lot more too, but those are the three that I can think of now. So yeah. So yeah. Werewolf nigga. That's me, bro. 
I didn't say I thought he was gonna say that shit. <laughs> he was like, you mean Ken? Ken is werewolf. Ken, Ken Wait a second. Like, Ken is a hood strip club right here. The they shaved my back for a twenty. Oh, wow. But that's it. That's it. I'm saying, who you got again? Uh, Cam, KB, you. Right. right. And uh, mine was Lance, Sherry, and Hydrinks. I know. Tony Robbins, Tony Baker. Devin Clark, who you pick? Your favorite piece? Like I'm talking to a bunch of comedians and shit. But hey, who? What bitch you like? Put it down in the comment section. Uh, subscribe, like, share the shit. Um, all good. This is um Mitch. This is um Ken Hamlet, and I'm Ronnie Ray. We out of here. We tired too. You don't brush your teeth a different way. What the fuck? Why are you in love with this dude? Wait, I ain't got no. <laughs> <laughs> I told him I'm fuck him up. You understood what I said? Didn't you? Dude on the corner, you understand what the fuck I'm talking about? What made you? You don't know what the fuck. <laughs> she wrote this song like he's like the curl looking at you. It's difficult to describe why are you going to do it. We got time, man. Like people. <laughs> I'm not even talking. I ain't saying nothing. That happened back here. You know, your time. It's your time. I know that maybe now it's not like doing its best because it's like not understanding anything. <laughs> <laughs> but he laughing though. Laughing is a universal language. But he's a smart guy. He what? He's a smart guy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's a smart guy, but not on Sunday. Yeah, that's my brain, though. Okay, man. No, we don't need, we don't nobody killing their own self-esteem up here. We about positivity. You a smart dude. Okay. Again. Why'd you marry him? I'm not rich, so I don't know. You know what? No, it's not rich. <laughs> what did I don't know what the fuck they said. Not rich. Not rich. Okay, not money then. Me neither. It's okay. I can relate to you. Maybe I have time to figure it out. So you just like with him. Like, I need a mate. Um, the next person to come out this man's bathroom, I'm going with him. Is that what happened? I'm trying to figure it out. I don't know. Maybe. Oh. <laughs> Robbie, you understand what the hell man? I mean, I'm a hoe, but like. <laughs> you know what? I'm a hoe. You're a hoe? I'm sitting People confessing they see you and he said, I'm a hoe. You know what a hoe is? He just, he just has sex with anything. He just, I don't give a shit. Like, I'm just, okay. That marriage is bullshit. I'm just out here on the streets. <laughs> I'm smashing four girls a weekend, goddammit. Why you a hoe, man? You, you gave yourself that title? Hell yeah. Damn. Yeah, I gotta be proud, man. Yeah, a proud hoe. Oh, yeah, proud a proud ass prostitute. Yeah. Are you getting paid for your service? No. No, oh, you a fucking <laughs> broke ass hoe. <laughs> I do you for no money. Hey, we gonna bring Robbie over here. Is that why y'all bring with Robbie? Like Robbie, oh, we good. He nice when people give me comedy tickets and shit. God damn, Robbie, you shouldn't be doing yourself like that. You deserve. I deserve more. Why are you a hoe, Bob? Then we gonna talk about Robbie. We gonna bring Robbie right here and shit. What the fuck, Robbie? What the fuck? Why are you a hoe, man? Uh, He's just out there with everybody and shit. I mean, you be butt naked at orgies like. Uh, God damn it, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> Dancing in slow motion, the song be fast in the morning. <laughs> Robbie just fucking everybody. You protected? You got kids and shit? What the fuck you doing? No. Me not protected either. God damn, we gonna, we gonna die next week. <laughs> damn, Robbie, you fucking up the comedy show. I know, it shit got dark. <laughs> it did get dark real quick. It started when y'all picked all strangers off the corner and shit. That's when it started. <laughs> Yeah, he called it this though. He said he's not smart and shit, and you a hoe. And yeah. Damn. <laughs> Fuck it. Um, y'all. <laughs> it's y'all stuff. I got silence. Yeah. yeah. Ain't nobody a hoe over there. Is no. Good. No. Y'all know how you met each other? Y'all know how y'all met each other and shit? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I'm on. You know the procedure. You've yeah. been around there for yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah, second date. Yeah. How'd y'all go? Second date today? Yeah. Give it up a second date. Give it up a second date. <laughs> second date today! Where'd y'all meet? Online. Hell yeah. <laughs> what, Tinder, uh, Bumble, uh, Craigslist? Which one was that? Hinge. Hinge. <laughs> Fuck that. Y'all said, I said Craigslist. Y'all know Craigslist, guys. <laughs> Craigslist is dirty as hell, though. You know, you know what Craigslist is? You know, you got the casual account, casual and agent. Like Robbie know about casual accounts. He's a <laughs> they some nasty ass people on fucking casual. Meet me behind the jewels at 6.30 with your penis out. Like, damn. 
Don't say a word. Get your, get your nut off and leave. I'm like, damn, this is nasty. <laughs> Which jewels is that? <laughs> Yo, thanks for watching. That's it. That's it for the time. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, tune in, subscribe, and watch when I put another one out. I'm going to keep dropping these because this is fun to me, being at home and making my own show. But when it, everybody close the show out, I like to leave you with some positivity. I call them dope quotes. The dope quote of the week. It's one of, for one of my sports heroes. One of my heroes, man. Period. The great, the late great Mr. Walter Payton. Mr. Walter Payton said this. When you're good at something, you tell everyone. But when you're great at something, they tell you. Meaning that just keep doing what you're doing. Become as, as good as you can. Don't worry about how good you are. Just let the people tell you how great you are. There's no need to be cocky in this game. We all have bad days. So look, let people tell you, get to that point. Just strive until you get to that point. And then when you get to there, go to the next level. That's what makes people great. So be great. And that's the end of the show. Rest in peace. The sweetness. Walter Payton, number 34.